Aloha and mahalo for tuning in to tonight's Dokoga TV. On this episode, we journey through Kyushu, the southern part of Japan, to learn more about historic figure, leader, rebel, and pioneer Saigo Takamori, who was featured on the annual year long historic drama on Japan TV network NHK's Segodon broadcast. Saigo Takamori was one of the leading figures during the transition of Japan's Edo era, known for its feudal system and samurai, to the embracing of modernization known as the Meiji period in Japan's history. Saigo Takamori is also referred to as the last true samurai. Tonight's episode kicks off our new video diary series, highlighting the various cities and locations in the Kyushu area that played a key role in Saigo Takamori's travels and experiences, as well as other iconic and historical figures that were inspired and influenced by his vision and life. This non-stop travel 808 group's journey started with a stop and stay for one night in Fukuoka, Kyushu's largest city. Speaking of which, you too can now visit the home of great ramen, street side dining, and delights before setting out on your Kyushu adventure. Hawaiian Airlines now has a direct flight to and from Honolulu to Fukuoka, and coming up later this season, my very special guest co hosts, Melissa Chang and Olena Hu, will share highlights from their Hawaiian Airlines Fukuoka inaugural flight celebration. The next day, we hopped on the Shinkansen, or bullet train, to start our Saigo Takamori adventures in the Kagoshima Prefecture, located at the southwestern tip of Kyushu Island. Here it comes, right over here. Look at that, the space shuttle. Nozomi N700 train. And we're gonna be in one of these cars, but I have a friend of mine here I wanna talk to. I've had the honor of traveling with you, uh, and we went to Niigata, and Ellen, welcome back. Thank you so much. This is gonna be my first time on this bullet train, so I'm excited. This is your first bullet train ride? Right, 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 oh. right, right. So, uh, wow, this thing goes really fast. So yeah, streamlined I'm, looking, too. The other good thing about bullet train is they have carts to come by that you can buy food and snacks and actually alcohol. Think about that. Oh, alcohol, too. <laughs> well, I've known Jean and her husband Reese for many years now. Shout out to Aaron Yamasato, a dear friend of mine, fellow filmmaker uh, on the island of Kauai, and of course Natsumi, Leah, Sophie. So I was so happy to find out that you're on this tour. Now, I understand you guys love the Tiger drama, the Sega Don drama, yeah? Yes, we, yeah, Maurice would always be home Tuesday nights by 8 o'clock, no matter what he had. <laughs> now, Maurice is a very, very busy architect and just a connoisseur of all things excellent. So he makes it home on time to watch the drama. That's right. <laughs> and then we learned, we couldn't figure out what Segodong meant. Right. So when we had Japan people explain to us that Saigo Takamori is mm -hmm. the way, you know, what Segodong is, yeah. then we understood because we heard that name and we had seen statues before. Ah, I see, I see, mm -hmm. I see. The non-stop travel Dokoga TV 808 Group's first stop was downtown Kagoshima, marked by the majestic white torii, or gate. The Terukuni Shrine is the final resting place for Kagoshima figure and 28th Lord Shimazu Nariakira. Enshrined here in 1863, Lord Nariakira was highly revered for his love of education and his fascination of Western technology tactics, and weaponry. In addition to designing the Japan national flag and building the first Western-style warship in Japan, Lord Nariakira was also the first person in Japan to use Morse code and is the subject for the oldest recorded surviving photo in Japan history, which was taken in 1857. The non-stop travel 808 crew continued our exploration and education of Saigo Takamori 
and the events that contributed to a revolutionary change in Japan's culture and history. Our visits to the Kagoshima City Museum of the Meiji Restoration and the Saigo Nanshu Memorial Museum helped outline the various facts and events surrounding Saigo Takamori's life and Japan's eventual rise to becoming an industrialized world power. Now, just in case you didn't get to see the Segadon NHK Taiga drama about Saigo Takamori, here's a quick history lesson. If you've seen the Tom Cruise Ken Watanabe movie, The Last Samurai, you pretty much have an idea of the story behind Saigo Takamori, who was the real life counterpart and inspiration to Ken Watanabe's character of Katsumoto. While there were a variety of challenges that erupted during Japan's rule by the Tokugawa shogunate during the Edo period, in 1854, the arrival of the American naval fleet under Commodore Perry and his show of military might, not to mention the ultimatum given to Japan to open its doors to the outside world, resulted in Japan's ending of Sakoku, 220 years of self-isolation. Japan's feudal structure and ultimate rule by the Shogun, which had been in place since the year 1185, was now coming to an end. Born in the town of Satsuma, the westernmost province in Kagoshima, Saigo Takamori, along with an alliance of western samurai, led imperial forces in 1867, which resulted in the surrender of the Tokugawa Shogunate and the end of the Edo era. The Meiji period, under Emperor Meiji, saw the introduction of modern advancements and influences from the West while establishing a centralized cabinet system of government. Ironically, within the first few years of the new system of government, discontent among the samurai and others that supported the Meiji government started to grow. Japan's move to modernization also meant the demise of the social status that the samurai class once held a growing concern of political corruption, change in culture, language, dress, and drastic reforms like that of banning samurai from being able to carry swords attributed to the growing tensions amidst the displaced Satsuma former samurai. And currently, the new government's distrust of Saigo Takamori, his followers, and the Kagoshima government overall also started to increase. Revolts against the newly formed government were rampant. Fear of an attack by the highly revered Satsuma Samurai, led by iconic Saigo Takamori, resulted in the Meiji government's assassination attempt of Saigo. While Saigo Takamori felt a sense of loyalty to the Meiji Emperor and did not want to rebel, he needed to address the apparent betrayal of the imperial government. On February 7, 1877, Saigo Takamori, along with 12,000 fellow Satsuma men, headed to Tokyo. War would become inevitable, and this march and engagements with the imperial troops became known as the Satsuma Rebellion. These Satsuma warriors faced a seemingly endless array of imperial soldiers armed with Western weaponry. On September 1877, at the Battle of Shiroyama, Saigo and his remaining 300 men launched a final suicidal charge. This would be the site of their defeat and where Saigo was mortally wounded. Saigo committed ritualistic suicide and was decapitated by one of his closest allies in order to preserve his honor. When the Satsuma Rebellion was over, many felt this marked the final days of the samurai. However, Saigo's legend during life continued to grow and spread after his death. Saigo Takamori helped usher in the modern era of Japan and was one of the three most powerful officials in the Meiji government, yet he never abandoned his love and dedication to samurai tradition. Saigo Takamori's strength, integrity, and convictions left a lasting impression on the people and government that he himself opposed. The Meiji Emperor pardoned Saigo and later built a statue that sits in Tokyo's Ueno Park to this day in honor of the last samurai Saigo Takamori.
So again, we are here in Kagoshima. Kagoshima, yes. Yeah. Part of the special non-stop travel of the Hoga TV. Mm -hmm. Sega Dong, Saigo Takamori, Tiger Drama Experience. Now, pork is the deal here in yeah. Kagoshima. Yeah. Kurobuta, black pork. So of course we have to have pork for lunch. This is the tonkatsu. Mm -hmm. Of course. Again, joining us as always, helping us here on our tours, Yuki. Hello. Yuki-chan. Hi, aloha. Aloha. Let's eat it. Let's eat it. Let's eat it. Let's enjoy. Always important yes. to have sauce. And then? Mmm. 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 Hearty, mm -hmm. juicy, mm. moist. Yeah. Very good. Very tasty. Oh, I wish you guys yeah. were here. Kagoshima, adventure continues. <laughs> That's boss, man. That is boss. Sure. That is boss. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm sold. This is the birthplace of the main man, Saigo Takamori. And as you can see behind me, the group is very quick to take pictures. And let's go check them out. I'm here with a dear friend of mine, Carol. Where do you hail from? Oh, from California, from Irvine. Irvine? Yes. So how'd you hear about the tour? We actually uh, took several tours with nonstop before. And then we met a very nice couple on our last tour. Mm -hmm. And they told us about this tour. I see. So this was a chance to visit uh, Kyushu and to come down to Kagoshima. I really did not know much about it. So in a sense, the Taiga drama is a historical drama. Right, right. It did introduce me to Japanese history by showing the characters who you know played an, an important role in Japanese history in this period. Uh, these stones were from the garden of the Saigo's house. This is wow. the original garden stone. Okay, so that is uh, uh, Saigo Takamori, Tanjo no Chi, the birthplace of Saigo Takamori. This is the birthplace of a hero, a uh, national hero, and uh, again, a key, a key uh, pioneer of the modernization of Japan. So enjoying our time here mm -hmm. in uh, Kagoshima. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're here with a non-stop travel. Doga TV tour all about Saigo. Wow. And Saigo Takamori, mm -hmm. of course, every year NHK has a huge drama. Mm -hmm. So we're learning more about him and there's so many fans mm -hmm. of the story that mm -hmm. watched it religiously in Hawaii. Wow. So it's neat to see, you know, mm -hmm. and having Sakura behind us mm -hmm. and walking down this bridge mm -hmm. and learning more about Saigo Takamori mm -hmm. as a Japan national yourself. Mm -hmm. Between traditional times versus modernization, mm -hmm. you know, how do you feel about it? Yeah, so it was big challenge because uh, uh, the Edo period, the, right. uh, the shogunate, and uh, wanted to keep their power. Mm. That's why they closed to overseas. But the, uh, the Satsuma Samurai Warrior right. wanted to open for the overseas, sure, and then sure. they have to learn about uh, Western right. thing and the modernization, right. and right. then because they had the war. Mm -hmm. against England. So right. they decided to open for overseas. So now in Japan, mm -hmm. it's very westernized and uh, Japan has a, a lot of technology. Sure. Yes, 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 so yes. That is uh, because of them. So probably at that time, mm -hmm. they're viewed as rebels, mm -hmm. you know, because they're going against the grain of preserving tradition. Yes. You know, we look at it two ways, you know, one as tradition, yes. you know, mm -hmm. purity of the culture mm -hmm. and language and people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, you also brought up a great point because those in charge want to keep the caste system so yes. that they're always on top yes. and everyone on the bottom will stay on the bottom. Yes. So yes. that's really a really neat way to look at it. Yeah. You know? And I think with people, you know, we learned today about the mm -hmm. Satsuma Warriors, mm -hmm. right? And, mm -hmm. and Saigo Takamori who played a pivotal role yeah. in the, the handoff between Edo and Meiji yeah. period. Yeah. Um, it's really neat to learn about that, mm -hmm. to be in the area, yes. you know, and we're going to his birthplace and, mm -hmm. and it was kind of neat folks and we didn't plan it this way, just the tour is, happens maybe right now. Mm -hmm. This is April of 2019, mm -hmm. this will air a few times, yes. but we are here during the handoff of an era, mm -hmm. right? We're going from, you know, the emperor who normally mm -hmm. has to pass away mm -hmm. and it goes to his son. Yes. Yes. Uh, this is the first time that mm -hmm. the emperor steps down. Mm -hmm. 
and his son will take place, which yes. I think is a great thing. You yeah, know, I think so too. He wants to end when he still has all of his capabilities, so yes. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yep. So the Hesse area ended. Mm -hmm. May 1st is going to be the Reiwa. Yes. Reiwa era. New era. New era here in Japan. It's pretty amazing to be here to see yeah, that and to, yeah. to witness that. So yeah. uh, this is great, folks. This is part of a special nonstop travel, yes. Segodon. Saigo Takamori tour and uh, we're just experiencing everything mm -hmm. Saigo Takamori yep. and, and learning so much about the culture and the people here so yeah. let's continue to explore yep. as we enjoy sakura and uh, eat more great food. Okay. Yeah. How many plates can we take? <laughs> <laughs> this is for our first dinner together and already everybody's kind of like family. They're all together, you know each other and you're doing really really well. And from from Bililani to Irvine, we have uh, we have a really good collection of people here. So exactly, uh, thank you to everyone. And then of course, you know, we have some travelers that we've been able to travel with before as well. So thank you so much for coming back. Yes. Come by. Come by. Come by. Come by. Come by. Come by. But it happens to be someone's birthday, Japan time. So we Japan did want time. To yes. To wish her a happy 27th birthday. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Happy birthday, Kabushima. Thank you. 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 Shoyu soft cream. Now, have you ever had that before? Shoyu? No. I thought she said soy. As we came in, she said, and you would want to try this ice cream. Please, please go ahead. Dozo, dozo, dozo. No initial shock reactions yet. Still all good. It doesn't remind me of shoyu, and yet I guess there is shoyu. I, I don't know. I, I see some uncertainty in your face if you're enjoying it or not. <gasps> yeah, I'm enjoying it, but um, I don't have a discriminating you know, taste bud like some people do. Like, like Polly does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're in line here uh, at the Tsurumaru Cafe. We have some Hawaii folks that are going to be trying Irvine Ohana as well, that I'll be trying the uh, shoyu soft cream, which would be very, very interesting. So I'm gonna, have you, have you picked your flavor yet? Half milk, half shoyu, oh, or God. pure shoyu. Oh. And the mix one's a little bit sweeter, smoother. The, the shoyu one, if you like a little more tart flavor, that's the one for you. No, I don't, okay. <laughs> you want the better one, or the most popular one? I want the... Hmm. But you can taste some shoyu, right? Because that's the uniqueness of it, and that's what we want it. It's very creamy. It's creamier than I thought. So the secret is, there's a shoyu flavor, uh, and there's this mixed flavor. The mixed flavor has a little bit of caramel, salty sweetness to it, where the shoyu is more like more of the tartness of shoyu itself. Yes, okay. this is the mixed flavor. That's the mixed flavor. Yeah. Tastes like ice cream. <laughs> Tastes like ice cream, okay. I think that's a positive, positive reaction, I believe. Mmm. Mmm, it's good. Mmm, I see. I see. Like, yeah, caramel. Mmm. Mm, mm. You're gonna add more shoyu to that? They have actually added shoyu, more shoyu to the mix. Oh, wow, shoyu. It tastes different. <laughs> it doesn't taste like ice cream. Now it is transformed. Mmm, show you. <laughs> Continued adventures here in Kagoshima. Stay tuned. Mahalo. Thank you. Mahalo for tuning in to tonight's episode of Dokoga TV. Tune in next week for our continued coverage of our nonstop travel Dokoga Video Diary series. We continue our trek around Kyushu, the southern part of Japan, following in the footsteps and travels of iconic and heroic samurai, the Saigo Takamori. Coming up later this season, Dokoga TV Japan Mania becomes Adventure Mania as we'll be taking you across Japan, Korea, 
Seattle, Alaska, and then some. Mahalo as always for tuning in, and on behalf of Team Dohoga TV, we'd like to wish you and your families all the best, and we cannot wait to join you on a non-stop travel adventure very soon. Take care and aloha. Aloha. Team Dohoga TV just wanted to let you know for more updates, news, and some cool contests, please follow us online. Mahalo as always for tuning in to Dohoga TV Japan Mania and see you next week.